Hello everybody, my name is Griffin, talking to you guys from Rishi Outpost, and today I'm going to be talking about the young adult novel Poe Dameron Freefall by Alex Segura. The book takes place 18 years after the Battle of Yavin and chronicles Poe Dameron's time as a spice runner, as referenced in The Rise of Skywalker. At 16 years old, Poe Dameron runs away from his home on Yavin 4 and joins up with the spice runners of Kajimi. With the spice runners, Poe gets the adventure he's been craving his whole life, but he knows that being a criminal is not the life that he wants to lead. Despite his deep misgivings, he stays with the group for months due to his close relationship with Zori Bliss. His spark with Zori begins to fade as after each mission they go on together, it becomes more clear to Zori that Poe does not want to live the life of a smuggler. Zori, on the other hand, wants nothing more than to rise through the ranks of the Spice Runners, particularly because her mother Zeva is the leader of the Spice Runners of Kajimi. The last straw for Poe is when Zori and her mother hatch a plot to murder as many of their rivals as possible possible with a ruse that lures them in, thinking that they were in talks to form an alliance, and then executing them publicly. Poe helps free the enemies of the Spice Runners from Zeva's grip, and makes his escape from a life of crime, having learned that he needs to do the right thing and try to help the galaxy, instead of selfishly chasing the next adventure. My overall impression of this book is it's mediocre and predictable. It wasn't a bad book by any means, it just didn't add anything new to the character of Poe Dameron, nor did it do anything else that really wowed me. This is Alex Segura's first Star Wars book, and I thought the writing was pretty average, as was the case with most aspects of the book. I never had trouble following what was going on, but I never really felt like the images described in the book were that memorable. The story itself was fine overall. I think the middle of the book drags on too long, talking about mission after mission that Poe and the crew goes on. It kind of gets repetitive, and nothing new is really revealed throughout this period of the book. We learn from the beginning of Poe being on the run that he's pretty uncomfortable with the illicit activities of the Spice Runners, so seeing this over and over again just gets a little bit redundant after a while. I thought the book really picked up when Poe's father Kess and Lulo track down Poe and confront him. From here, the book really moves along at a nice pace until the end. I think my biggest issue with the story overall is that Poe faces no consequences for his criminal actions. He just gets to move right along and enlist in the New Republic Navy after months of being part of a major crime syndicate. Obviously, we know that he redeems himself based on the movies and other material that takes place after this book, but it might have been interesting if he'd had to enlist with the New Republic fleet in order to avoid time in prison or something along those lines. As far as the characters go, I think Segura nails younger versions of Poe and Zori. Unfortunately, Poe is never as much fun when he's not on screen being played by Oscar Isaac. I really think that he brings a charm to the character that doesn't translate very well into books, as he's never as much fun in this story as he is on screen in the sequel trilogy. At the end of the book, Poe causes Zori to have to fight against her mother before he runs away from the Spice Runners of Kajimi, which makes her wanting to kill him when she sees him in The Rise of Skywalker make a lot of sense. He didn't just leave the crew, he really messed things up for Zori. Zori wasn't really one of my favorite characters in The Rise of Skywalker, but she was alright, and she's fun to read in this book. Zori's mother, Zeva Bliss, is a ruthless criminal, and seeing her play off of Zori, who seems to have a little bit more heart, and Poe, who has a lot of heart, is really interesting. Poe's father, Kess, is also nice to read about. He's a very sad man and afraid of losing Poe, which makes perfect sense after his wife died tragically shortly after the end of the Galactic Civil War. We also get to see the Duros pilot Lulo, who was always fun to see pop up during this time period. The biggest new character we get in this book is the New Republic intelligence agent, Sela Troon. Troon is a bit of a one-dimensional character who basically just wants to take down the Spice Runners of Kajimi because they killed her family. But despite that being her only real trait, I thought she was a fine addition to the book. Overall, I thought the characters were all written fine, but no one really stood out to me in this book. One aspect that I did think was lacking overall in the book was the action. There's actually quite a bit of action in terms of standard shootouts and ship chases, but we aren't really that attached to any of the characters besides Poe and Zori, who we know can't die. So it kind of just reads as action being thrown in for the sake of having action. None of Poe's narrow escapes are exciting since we know he's going to get away. I also thought the fight at the end of the book with Zeva using her sword to fight Selatrun was pretty silly. I get that she's brutal, but she's also ruthlessly efficient throughout the rest of the book, and her pulling out a sword to kill Troon seemed pretty out of character. As far as lore goes, we get a decent picture of what the criminal underworld landscape is looking like at this point in the timeline. The Pike Syndicate is mentioned as still existing, but being in decline. The Guavian Death Gang, on the other hand, seems to be on the rise, as Poe and Zori have a very close 
run in with them. The other piece of lore we got that I thought was interesting was that we see light speed skipping again, and I hate it even more in this book than I did in The Rise of Skywalker, as it kind of confirms that they're going from system to system in a matter of seconds. And they're also being tracked through light speed in this book, which is supposed to be impossible before The Last Jedi, where the First Order comes up with light speed tracking. I think the idea that traveling from system to system should take it a decent amount of time is pretty important, and it's been upheld throughout pretty much all of Star Wars media until The Rise of Skywalker with light speed skipping, so I don't really want to see that unravel anymore, and I also thought the same thing about them being tracked through light speed. That's kind of important that when you go to light speed, you're kind of in the clear. That's a big part of the movies before The Last Jedi, so I kind of hope those elements get kind of contained after this book, and I get that they wanted to throw that in there since it's in The Rise of Skywalker, and this is very much a tie-in to that, but I kind of hope we don't really do that anymore because that's just always been rules that I thought have worked well in Star Wars previously. But overall, I think the problem for this book is there just wasn't a lot of room for a creative story to be told here. We know going into it that Poe will become a spice runner and that he will walk away from that life unscathed. And considering Poe's recklessness, it was pretty easy to guess that all of that just happened because he was bored. So this doesn't really shed light on anything new. So overall, I'd say this book is pretty skippable, but it's not bad. If you're a big fan of Poe or of The Rise of Skywalker, then you'll probably enjoy it, is the book definitely connects to that movie and gives you a lot more time with Poe. Just don't expect anything mind-boggling out of this one. Well, that's all I have for you guys this time. Be sure to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it, and please remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, and as always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.